we're going to be getting into the text between Cassie, Nicole, and Shannon. It was like a group text. So let's just get right into it. Okay, it says on 8-8 of 2018 at 9.52 a.m. Colorado time, Cassie texts Shannon and Nicole to ask if they still be her friend if she lived in Boulder. After six tests about that, Shannon asked Nicole to tell her the sex of the baby, saying she needed some happy news. They arranged for Nicole to tell Shannon in person, and Cassie wants to FaceTime it with them. Shannon tells Nicole to come early and that she is up at 6. Nicole asks what time Chris leaves, and Shannon replies, Dude, oh, need 6. 6. Come whenever in a.m., just not 11. Nicole asks, what is at 11? And Shannon replies, too long. And a laughing emoji. They agreed to around 7.30 or 8 a.m. Shannon texts to ask or tell someone to text Taylor about canceling the gender reveal. Nicole said she texts Taylor, and Shannon tells them not to slip on Facebook as she does not want anyone to know right now because Chris will then know and she wants him to want to know. Cassie replied, fuck him. Yep, I said it. Shanann replied, I agree, Cass. Both Nicole and Cassie agreed to not post on Facebook. Shanann replied, quote, please no, he doesn't deserve to know. He doesn't even want it, jackass. He's such a fucking liar. He said, I think it would be great having another. He wanted this. He started the convo. You don't get me pregnant and not love me. What's that going to do? Unquote. Nicole encourages Shanann, stating that she is one of the strongest people she knows and knows she will get through this. Shanann replied, quote, Fuck him. I am nowhere near perfect, but I love unconditionally. I give my all. I do so much as a mom and wife. More than 90% of women out there. This fucking sucks so bad because I do love him and his fucking flaws. Cassie encouraged Shanann, and Shanann replied, quote, This is a total slap in the face. Stab in the back to the heart. I can't afford three kids alone in Colorado, unquote. Cassie and Nicole encouraged Shanann, and Shanann told them she loved them. They start chatting about Cassie and Josh moving into the house with Shanann. Shanann says the house is in Chris's name. They discuss that the court would make or sell it before Chris just gets it. They encourage Shanann further. Shanann replied that Masturbating is an awesome stress reliever with a laughing and I don't know emoji. Shanann said that when she asked him for a hug and to hold her tonight for a minute, he said he couldn't do it right now. Shanann said he's not there right now. Shanann sent a screenshot of what appeared to be her texting Chris. Quote, today, 6.09 a.m., do you want to find out together with me tonight on the baby's gender? Unquote. Chris replied, yes. And Shanann loved his reply with a heart emoji. Shanann replied, quote, Please take five minutes today to write me and tell me how you are feeling. I love you, Chris, more than you know. Unquote. Shanann texts that she offered it to him this morning and told Cassie and Nicole, quote, I need us to work, and if he's wanting to know with me, I'm willing to wait. Can you put it in another envelope? I'd love to still see you, unquote. Thursday, August the 9th, 2018, 729 hours, Colorado time, and that would be 529 p.m. Cassie texts that her interview went amazingly and asked what happened with Shanann. Shanann replied 
that she was talking with Chris and would text them later. Thursday, 8-9-2018 at 2049 hours Colorado time. And that's 8.49 p.m. Cassie asked Shanann and Nicole how they are doing. Shanann replied that Chris wants to move to Brighton. Shanann texts, quote, Nico Lee Watts, and see it's spelled N-I-K-O, quote, We are not telling the world to Monday, unquote. Quote, Tonight has been the best talk yet. Unquote. Texts are then about Arizona travel. Monday, 12.25 a.m. 8.13, 1.25 a.m. Colorado time. Shanann text landed with three sleeping emojis. Text between Cassie and Chris. Monday, 11.43 a.m. 8.13, 2018. 12.43 p.m. Colorado time. Cassie texts Chris to tell him she is worried and knows they are having problems, but she has never seen Shanann so broken to the extent that she is worried. Chris replied to Cassie, quote, She went to a friend's house with the kids. She won't tell me where she is, though. When I get home, I will update you, unquote. Cassie tells Chris that her car and shoes, and everything is at the house. She asks what is going on, that she would totally shut out everything, saying it is not like her. Chris replied, quote, I told Nikki about it so she wouldn't freak out anymore at the house. I think Christina knows as well. We talked last night, and I told her I wanted to sell the house, get something smaller. Separation would be best right now if we can work through the issues. I really don't want you to think I'm a bad person, Cassie. Unquote. Cassie replied that she did not care and was worried about Shanann's well-being. She told Chris that Nikki was calling the police due to their concern. 8-13-2018 at 13.05 Colorado time. Chris replied, and 13.05 would be 1.05 p.m. Quote, I'm going home, Cassie, on my way. Don't call the police. I will be there in 45 minutes. Screenshots received from Cassie of text between Cassie and Shanann. Okay, and this one is an investigative supplement. Report date was on 8.22. Description is the second search of Survey 319. Search of Survey 319, the road leading to Survey 319, the search of 1029 and Survey 1129 for missing blankets and toys from the house. Watts stated he left these items on Survey 319, but the initial search of the area did not recover them. And subject number one, Lou Keppel. Subject number two, Tony Husky. Subject number three, Agent Matt Pollard. Binion Survey. And you know Binion, you know in Vegas, Binion, they're very, very well-known people. Um, Binion is, that owns like, I believe it was the Horseshoe Casinos and some of the really big casinos. And so it's actually Binion Ranch. I'm not sure. A lot of you may have already known that. But yeah, it's all known as Binion Ranch. They have a lot of cattle there, and they do like rodeos and miscellaneous things there, and the Binion family owns it. You know, and as I said, the Binion family is very well known for all their casinos in Vegas. That's just a little fun fact in case you wasn't already aware of that. And the only reason I knew that is when I saw the name Binion when I was reading through the Discovery before. And I saw it was actually called Binion Ranch, is what Survey 319 is. And I was like, Binion? I knew the name Binion because I'd watched a documentary on well-known Binions that owned the motel, uh, the motels and the casinos and all of that in Vegas. Pretty sure one of them was the Horseshoe. And there was a lot of uh, family problems 
with that whole situation there. It was a very interesting documentary, to say the least. And that's how I remembered the Bemian name. Okay, this is a synopsis. It says, on Tuesday, August the 14th, CBI agent Greg Zentner received a request from the Frederick Police Department to assist with a missing persons case. On Tuesday, August the 24th, 2018, CBI agent Ron C. and I searched Survey Ranch sites, Survey 319, Survey 1029, and Survey 1129 for blankets and toys reportedly missing from the Watts house. Action taken. On Friday, August 17, 2018, I re-interviewed Anadarko employee Troy McCoy. During this interview, McCoy said he thought Chris Watts may have placed evidence related to this case on Survey Ranch oil well sites on Monday, August the 13th, 2018. On Tuesday, August the 21st, at approximately 12.53 p.m., I contacted Anadarko Regional Security Manager Tony Husky and requested permission to go to the oil well sites on Survey Ranch to look for items of evidence related to this case. Husky consulted with legal representative representation from Anadarko and then granted us permission to go into the sites. Husky said he would be able to provide an escort to the sites. GPS information provided earlier in the investigation by Anadarko showed Watts drove to three different oil well sites on Survey Ranch on Monday, August the 13th. These sites were identified by Anadarko employees as Survey 319, 1029, and 1129. At 1.25 p.m., I contacted Binion Survey, who is the owner of Survey Ranch via telephone, and requested permission to go onto his land where the oil well sites are located to search for evidence related to this case. Mr. Survey verbally granted permission to law enforcement and Anadarko employees to enter his property to look for evidence. At about 2.30 p.m., Husky advised me that one of the oil well sites, 1029, I requested to visit the Survey Ranch was actually on property owned by the state of Colorado. I contacted Matt P., who is the manager of the North Central District of the State Land Board, and requested permission to go onto the land which contained Site 1029. Polar verbally granted permission to CBI agents to look on this parcel of land for any evidence related to the case. At approximately 3.30 p.m., CBI agent C and I entered onto Survey Ranch escorted by Anadarko employee Luke Apple. We first drove to Survey 1029 and completed a search of the surrounding area for any evidence. We did not locate any items of value. Using GPS information provided by Anna Darko and the statement from McCoy, we were able to locate an area of interest on the south side of the holding tanks of 1029. McCoy told agents that Watts had parked his work vehicle on the south side of the holding tanks so Watts could defecate. McCoy thought Watts may have buried evidence there. We were able to locate an area of ground which appeared to be recently disturbed as well as tire tracks on the south side of the holding tanks. We used a shovel to carefully scrape off the top layers of dirt. We discovered what appeared to be paper towels along with what appeared to be excrement. Nothing else was located in this area. See attached videos and photos. Well, not really that interested in seeing those photos and I can't remember if they're attached to the discovery or not. I guess we're fixing to see. We then proceeded to Survey 1129 and searched this location on foot. We did not locate any items of value. 
We left Surrey 1129 and drove slowly on the road to 319, checking the side of the road for any evidence. We did not locate any item of evidence on the side of the road. We then entered 319 and searched the side of the foot. We did not locate any item of evidentiary value. We left Surrey Ranch at about 6 p.m. Nothing further. Greg Z. Attachments. And it just tells what they have. Images and such attached to their report. Okay, going on down, we have another investigative supplement report. The report date was 8-22. And it's going to be text messages between Christina Meacham and Chris Watts. From 8-21 to 8-21, the synopsis reads on August the 21st, 2018, CBI agent Kellen H. received an email from Christina Meacham containing five images files of a text message string between her and Chris Watts starting on Monday, August the 13th at 10.10 10 a.m. The image files are attached to this supplemental report. Christina Mitchum. Okay, we do have Christina's um, interview on the channel and I will link it at the end of this video if you haven't heard it yet. Okay, this is going to be another investigative supplemental report dated August the 22nd. The description is the third interview with Nicole Kessinger. It was done on 821 by Kevin Kobach, and it is going to be her third interview, but this one's done by phone. So this is actually her second phone interview, and I also have that in its complete entirety and I will also link it at the end of this video and the thing of it is is if you haven't heard that I highly recommend listening to it because we've already learned that the reports from her are written quite different than you actually hear it from the tone of her own voice the last report we read we read of hers it actually made her sound like a very respectable great almost like another victim of Chris's and a lot of people may believe that she is you know and that's okay if that's what you think that's fine um, I don't think she's as victim as a lot of people or not a lot I'm not gonna say a lot because it's really not a lot but as some people think she is. I don't, I don't think so. And I don't think so because I go strictly from the facts of the discovery and the words out of her own mouth. That is where I get my thought and opinion of her. And my thought and opinion is she is no victim at all. So we're going to read her report here. Those of you that have already listened to her second phone interview, I feel that after we read her report here and what they actually put in here about what she said and I don't even remember so we're going to be looking at this together can't even remember how it's wrote up it's been a long time since I read this but I can assure you that the report and the way it's written is going to sound quite different in thought and opinion than the actual audio version of her interview does okay let's get right into it please overlook my cats in there they I don't know what's up with them they're just arguing and I don't know it's I've got two girl cats and they just can't seem to get along very well okay let's get right let's into read. this August the 21st 2018 phone interview with Nicole Kessinger action taken on August the 21st 2018 I, CBI agent Kevin Kobach, spoke with Nicole Kessinger by telephone. Nicole updated me on memories regarding her relationship and conversations with Christopher Watts. The following is a summary of the phone call with Nicole. The phone call was recorded and is attached to this report for review of the exact contact of the interview. The interview was sent for transcription on August the 22nd. Nicole stated the following during the interview. 
She has been thinking about Chris's use of Thrive. Chris always wore at least two patches, usually on his left and right bicep tricep area. Chris would also apply the patch to his lower back. Chris also used the supplements, shakes, and pills on a daily basis and followed the Thrive routine. Chris lost 13 pounds between July the 4th and August the 11th. On July the 4th, Nicole went to Chris's home in Frederick, Colorado to help Chris set up his diet and loss exercise goals. Nicole said this was the first time she was at Chris's home. After spending time with Chris at Chris's home on July the 4th, 2018, Nicole went to the Colorado Rockies baseball game without Chris. The second and final time she went to Chris's home was on July the 14th of 2018. Nicole said Chris was always full of energy and he did not need to sleep. He regularly went to sleep at 11 p.m. to 12 a.m. and woke between 4.30 and 5 a.m. Wow, she really knows his schedule pretty well, huh? That she has spent every night with him when he goes to sleep and when he wakes up. Nicole recalled that Chris would sometimes fall asleep during their conversations but catch himself and wake back up. Sounds like he was kind of nodding out at times around her, which is so odd because we've not heard anyone else say that. Out of all the interviews and all of his friends and everyone he works with and family, nobody else has said that he has this nodding out problem um, in the middle of a conversation except her. So that's kind of odd. I mean, in my opinion, right? Do you think that's odd? Did he only do that when he was around her? I don't know. Never heard anyone else say anything about it. I'm sure if he was doing it around Shanann that, um, you know, when they were in North Carolina or whatever, I'm sure she would have mentioned it in text to her friends or her family would have noticed it, but nobody else has ever mentioned that but Nicole. So maybe he only did it around her. Maybe he only nodded out around her. Maybe she was just really boring <laughs> or something. But for some reason, he nodded out around her a lot and, uh, or sometimes and would just that come back, come back around and continue talking. But only around her, I guess. Nobody else said anything about it. Anyway, Nicole recalled the following dates and locations which she and Chris visited during their relationship. Saturday, August the 11th. Chris drove to her home in his Lexus, not with Shanann's Lexus, actually. They went to the Lazy Dog Bar at 120th and Federal in Westminster and chose to leave this location to go to another Lazy Dog Bar at 144th Avenue and I-25 in Erie, Colorado. I think it was Sam Paisley that said uh, in her interview that she was actually with Shanann when Shanann got the um, message, it may not have been Sam, I can't remember. I think it was that they saw it was uh, 60-something dollars for Salmon and Bear at Rusty Bucket. So, you know, I don't know. Uh, Nicole says it was Lazy Dog. Two different ones. Um, but then the people that was with her that, you know, seen her look at her um, text, I think, or she told about it, was... Uh, rusty bucket. So, I don't know. They drove Nicole's Toyota 4Runner to both locations. After having a meal at the second Lazy Dog, they returned to Nicole's home. Chris left her home in his Lexus. Nicole recalled that Chris always paid for their meals when they were out on dates. Chris has always paid for everything using Anadarko gift cards. Nicole was not certain how Chris got the gift cards, but believes they were given to him by Anna Darko as a bonus for being safe on the job. Well, you would think she would know if they were, you know, being given to him for being safe on the job, safety, since she is over 
the safety part of Anadarko, but I don't know. Nicole believed Chris had been using the gift cards to hide their relationship from Shanann. Well, I mean, you've been with him for two months. Come on, never ask him why do you always use the gift cards or... Of course you did. Of course you did. You didn't have to believe. It wasn't... It didn't take a rocket scientist to know. Even you said at one point you assumed he still had balance on one of them. So you didn't know why he used his actual card, right? So... Actually, it was this interview, and I'm not sure if it's in the report, but yeah, you actually mentioned, Nicole, that you would think he had a balance left on one, so you don't know why he used his regular debit card, but anyway. Nicole noticed on August the 11th at the Lazy Dog in Erie, Colorado, Chris paid for their meal with a baby blue credit card. During this time, Chris also made it clear to Nicole he was filing for divorce from Shanann. Nicole thought that it was unusual for Chris to pay with a credit card, as he has always used the gift cards. She believed Chris had nothing to hide anymore from Shanann, so he was not concerned with paying with a credit card that Shanann may be able to see the transactions on. Well, I mean, my question is, if you're convinced or, you know, know in your heart since he's told you this and you completely believed him that they were getting separated. Um, would it have been possible that maybe he would have gotten his own checking account? You know, a lot of people do that. A lot of husbands and wives have their own personal checking accounts. Um, so why would you just assume the reason he used a different one and not one of the gift cards is because, you know, he didn't care if Shanann found out or not. I mean, how did you know that that was a joint account with him and Shanann? What if it was just his own personal account. It sounds like you knew that that was a joint account with them, so, you know, I mean, I would never assume that, right? I really wouldn't. I don't think anyone would, really, but I guess you just assume they had a joint checking account because you weren't asked about this. This is something you voluntarily told. So, um, it's probably, I mean, it, is it possible, maybe, that Chris may have told you that Shanann saw that charge and she was really pissed about that when she got home that morning or before she got home that morning. Just wanted to be like, oh, I need to bring that out there. You know, I need to bring that out there about that card. I don't know. I don't know. It looks like you would have said something about it before this interview. This is like your third interview with them. Second phone, but third interview. And you've talked with Chris several many times since um, August the 13th. So maybe he mentioned it to you that she was drilling him about it. Or, or maybe because that during their home search they were getting him to go through his bank statements and charges and all that kind of stuff. And maybe see text. Or Shanann's friend said, hey, that was a lot, you know. And I don't know, I don't know. It's an awful lot of time for you just to bring that out of the blue. Anyway, I don't know, it just gets to me that everything that you just quote-unquote thought about calling and letting them know here, even the Rockies game, you went to the Rockies game on the 4th of July, and that's cool. You know, I bet you had a good time, whatever. At the same time, that was Chris's excuse, right? For the lazy dog night. That's what he told everybody. I went to a Rockies game with the friends at work. So the same night he's using his debit card that you just assumed was because he didn't care if Shanann knew or not, um, it's the same night he claimed he was going to a Rockies game, right? And at the same time, during the same interview, you bring up that you went to a Rockies game that night, or no, the 4th of July, but you had to bring up the Rockies game, like, all this just now comes to your mind. I don't know. I find that awfully coincidental myself. Who did you go to the Rockies game with on the 4th of July? Nicole? Was it friends from work? <sighs> anyway, Friday, July the 6th, 2018. On July the 7th, 2018, Chris and Nicole went to a movie theater near 144th and I-25. They attempted to see Jurassic Park at approximately 7 p.m., but the show was sold out. They walked to a bench near Victoria's Secret and sat and talked for approximately two hours then attended the 9 p.m. show. 
Saturday, July the 14th, 2018. This is the second time Nicole had been to Chris's home. She picked him up at his home, and they drove to Boulder, Colorado, in her Toyota 4Runner. There, they went to the Shelby Mustang Museum. They arrived at approximately 11 a.m. After going to the museum, Nicole took Chris back to his home, July the 21st, 2018. Chris and Nicole went to Bandemere Speedway to watch the drag races. They arrived in the early afternoon. Prior to attending the event, they went to a rooftop bar in Morrison, Colorado, where they had lunch. Nicole could not recall the name of the bar, but after an open source search, it is likely the location is the Rooftop Tavern Tavern, at 215 Bear Creek Avenue, Morrison, Colorado, July the 28th and July the 29th, 2018. Nicole and Chris went to the Great Sand Dunes National Monument in Alamosa, Colorado. They drove to the location in Nicole's Toyota 4Runner. They tent camped at Zapata Falls in an established campground on July the 28th. Nicole said they stopped at a local gas station near the Great Sand Dunes National Park and purchased ice and firewood. Okay, I gotta stop right there. In an earlier interview she gave, she said that they went to the sand dunes the weekend of the 4th of July. Now, I know that's a fact because I just had that on our um, Friday Night Randomness Live, Randomness Live we had, and it was part of the trivia question, okay? It was for part 1 through 14 of the discovery, and of course, we're on part 15 now. So, in her former interview, as she did when, I think it was when her dad was with her. She said they went there the weekend of the 4th of July. It's in the Discovery. It's right there in the Discovery. And if you would like to refer back to that, it is in Part 9 of the Discovery where she says that. So, it's rather interesting to see that slip up. That's a, that's a pretty big slip up right there from the weekend of the 4th of July until the end of the month. In July so did they go there twice did she really go to that Rockies game now we know Chris went to the fireworks show on the 4th of July because Nick and Amanda Thayer saw, them, saw him there they talked about seeing him there Chris never mentioned seeing them there but they talked about seeing him there so he did go to the fireworks show was Nicole with them at the fireworks show just kind of standing off in the distance maybe and Chris goes, hey, I know those people hang here. Now, it's not a conspiracy. I'm just saying. I'm going straight by her words. Her two stories here isn't that enough. Because in Discovery Part 9, in her other interview, she says they were there on the weekend of July the 4th at the Sand Dunes. At the Sand Dunes, right? So, did they go to the Sand Dunes twice? Or, or what? Did they leave the fireworks show and go on to the Sand Dunes? I don't know. Or did they leave the sand dunes, go to the fireworks show, go back to sand dunes? Or is it true she went to a Rockies game and he fireworks show by himself? Which I don't believe. Anyway, what do you think? She did change the sand dunes date twice. This is the second time. Nicole said Chris paid for the items, but she was uncertain if he used a gift card. Chris also rented Sanborns. For the Great Sand Dunes. The only gas station near the Great Sand Dunes is the Oasis. When returning home from the Great Sand Dunes, Nicole's friend Charlotte asked her to go to the festival. I'm not going to try to say that because I know I can't. Nicole made an excuse why she could not go as she was with Chris and did not want Charlotte to know. Renaissance. There you go. The Renaissance Festival. <laughs> Nicole said she and Chris stopped in Colorado Springs at BJ's. They sat to the right of the doors and Chris paid for their meals with a gift card. BJ's restaurant is located North Nevada Avenue in Colorado Springs, Colorado. 
both then returned home. Okay, where's home? Her home, his home. It's her home. We know that now because Chris always said he, well, Chris said he spent every night at her house. Every night. The whole time she was in North Carolina, except the little short weekend that she was away on her birthday, July the 3rd. So, see, that would be the 4th of July weekend. That was her birthday weekend. And she was at his house. And she said she left. That was supposedly the first time she ever went there. And she said she left him there. But at the same time, she also said they spent the weekend of the 4th of July at the Great Sand Dunes. And that would be in Discovery Part 10 if you want to go listen to that and see that in the Discovery. Obviously, Kobach didn't pick it up or didn't think about it or ignored it. I don't know, but it's there. Nicole said Chris left Colorado for North Carolina on July the 31st. She could not recall what day Chris returned home, but believed he was gone for approximately one week. Oh, she knows when he returned home, how she was texting him back to back to back from the minute he left till the minute he got back, so she knew, in my opinion. She said the next date she had with Chris was on August the 11th when they visited the Lazy Dog Bar. Nicole recalled further information on statements made by Chris. She said at the time he made the statements, they did not cause her concern, but when reflecting back on the conversations, they caused her concern. Well, that's the same with us and her statements. You know, thinking back on what she said causes us concern, right? So, I understand what she means by that because her inconsistencies and story changes concerns me as well. Nicole referenced a phone call with Chris on Monday, August the 13th. She said this was in the evening and Chris was making statements about his children's sheets being smelly and about what and about Shanann's wedding ring. During this conversation, Chris told Nicole that Shanann was okay with their separation. Nicole found this concerning as she had discussed with Chris trying to repair his relationship with Shanann prior to her prior to him leaving for North Carolina. So she's trying to get him to fix his relationship before he goes to North Carolina. But we all know what she was doing while he was in North Carolina was everything but encouraging him to fix his relationship. I mean, she was, they were sending nude pictures to each other. Um, you know, we got the pictures. I would love to see the actual text. And we didn't get the actual nude nude photos. Not that we want them. We got enough to know what was going on in text as far as pictures goes while he was in North Carolina. I would like to see the text, though. But, of course, they were deleting them back to back. Chris was telling Shanann it was text from his dad, which is he probably was deleting text from his dad, too, maybe. I don't know, but I believe he was also deleting text from her. Of course he was. Because he said himself she was blowing his phone up the whole time he was there. So Chris told Nicole he had told Shanann he wanted to fix the relationship while in North Carolina. And Shanann said she did not want to try and wanted a divorce. Nicole believed Chris was lying about Shanann saying she was okay with the divorce and the separation. Okay, if she believed he was lying, why would she say that? If she believed Chris was lying about Shanann saying she is okay with them getting a divorce and separation, then why did she tell him to delete all of his texts so his friends wouldn't find out about their relationship? Why did she tell him to delete all of his texts, period? She's sitting there telling you that she knows that Chris's wife did not want a divorce and a separation because she thought Chris was lying about it. So if she thought Chris was lying about it, then why did she keep coming on stronger to Chris? You know, the only reason she could have continued or should have continued to continue on with being strong and staying with him and texting him and sending him these pictures and all this is she would have believed that yeah his wife wanted to divorce and he did too and that was that but uh, she said I think Chris is lying that Shanann wanted him apart she knows Shanann didn't she knew Shanann was trying to save her marriage 
If you'll read between the lines right there, you can see that. She knows Shanann wanted to save her marriage. Period. She said it herself, right? Nicole said during the same phone conversation, she and Chris discussed why Celeste EpiPen would have been left behind by Shanann. Knowing that Celeste has an extreme nut allergy, Nicole said she questioned Chris about this and it seemed odd. Chris responded saying they had a stash of EpiPens and maybe Shanann took one of those. Nicole said she knew this was a lie as EpiPens are very expensive. How does she know? I mean, really, yeah, they're very expensive. But she also knows how very protective Shanann is of her kids. She's also claimed to know how OCD, quote-unquote, and quote-unquote controlling Shanann is. So how, so why would she know that's a lie? It's quite possible Shanann would have had three or four EpiPens, one to keep at home, one to keep in the car, one to keep in her purse, you know, I mean, yeah. So she wouldn't know that was a lie. I mean, it might be a small random thing, but to me it's another lie. Anyway... And not only is it another lie, it's another inconsistency. When you put it with her knowing and already saying that they were both so OCD and and they both know this baby has such an extreme allergy and how Shanann literally freaked out at the thought of Celeste being exposed to the nuts. So, I don't see how that would have been such a big deal or... How she would have thought that was such a lie. She didn't. It's just filling in dead air is what it is. In my opinion, I can't say that for certain, but, you know, I don't know. Nicole also questioned Chris during the phone call as to why he had not came into the Anadarko office location on Monday, August the 13th, 18. Okay, what time was Nicole there Monday? She pinged in Frederick at 6.16 a.m. And we know that. That's fact. So with her pinging there at 6.16 a.m., well, we, I think he said it usually takes him about 45 minutes to drive to work. But either way, that would still, you know, be getting her there after 7 a.m. I'm sure her shift is 7 to 3. Um, so she would have been late. Um, she said most of the guys are out of the office by... 8 o'clock at the latest, I believe is what she said, and 7.30 or 8. And she had already talked to Chris, and they had already discussed that he would not be coming into the office. He would be going straight to the site because of a leak. Remember, she said they had already talked about that, and she didn't really find anything weird about it because, you know, um, he does do that sometimes, you know. So why would she be questioning him why he didn't come into the office that morning? If he had already told her he had to go to that survey 319 that morning. And she's the one that said he had done told her about it and she didn't find anything odd about it. But yet she questioned him why he wasn't there. Inconsistencies much? I mean, you know, not conspiracy, not theories, facts from her own mouth. She said although Chris usually comes to the office location in the mornings, there have been times when he reported directly to the field. Well, he had already told her that he was going to go do that. So, Nicole said it was ironic his wife was missing and he did not come to the office that day. So, she questioned him. Okay, she didn't know his wife was missing, right? I mean, not not till I think she said 3.45 p.m. She didn't know his wife was missing. And she already knew he had to go to that um, leak at Survey 319. So why didn't she? Why, why would she question him about the office when? I mean, she she couldn't have even got there herself till seven. It, you know, I, we don't even know that because she didn't clock in that morning. So, ah, <sighs> Nicole, Nicole. Now listen to this. Nicole recalled Chris telling her on Sunday that he was not going to come to the office and was going to a pump site. She recalled during this phone conversation on August the 12th that a television was playing in the background, and she thought it was strange Chris was watching television very late at night. So that was during the two-hour conversation they had that he told her he wouldn't be going to the office that morning, but yes, she thought it was odd he wasn't there. So she questioned him about it, even though he had done told her he wouldn't. And, um, 
She had no idea, supposedly, that his children were missing or his wife until 3.45 the afternoon. So, all of that is jumbled word salad. It really is. And how anybody can't see that... I mean, she's contradicting her own self here, people. Come on. She's contradicting her own self. Really. There's no other way to look at it. Almost in the same breath. She's questioning why he wasn't in the office, yet the night before she talked to him for two hours and he told her he wasn't going to come to the office. I don't know. And then she thought it was odd because he was watching TV at midnight. My TV's on right now. It's 3.30 a.m. Nicole believed Chris was waiting up for Shanann to arrive home from Arizona that evening. And that is why the television was on. Chris told her during this call that he had to go to the field to check on a release... Nicole explained a release was a small oil leak at a well or pump site. Nicole was suspicious as to why Chris would be checking on a release as he was not part of the environmental team. Yeah, well, she is part of the environmental team. You see, she is over environmental and safety department. That, that, that's her job there. She is over environmental health and safety. But yet she didn't know about the leak, and he did. And one of those leaks, no matter how small, could be extremely dangerous. You know, as we've said before, just a few months before this, a leak caused massive damage for Anadarko. Pumps blowing up, people losing their lives, neighborhoods being burnt down. But yet, Chris knew about this leak, and she didn't. And she sits there, in her own words, and said, he's not part of the environmental team. No, but she is. She's like the main person over that. She's over environmental health and safety. She said it several times. She explained, usually, if a release is reported, a team of environmental specialists respond to deal with the release. Well, there you go. She knows exactly what happens when there's a leak because she's part of the environmental specialist. She is part of the safety. She is the environmental and safety department. She would have been the first one, or should have been, the first one to be alerted to this problem, correct? I mean, I don't work for no oil site or anything. At the same time, any other field I've ever worked in, you have to work through the chain of command. You have to report issues to the correct person. And then that person will send the other correct persons out to fix the problem, right? Well, so she didn't know about it, and Chris did, and she thought it was odd because, oh my goodness. Anyway, Chris occasionally deals with the release and may be responsible for closing valves and or shutting off tanks to stop the release. Chris told Nicole he was going to check out equipment and do a lockout tagout on the site if there was a release. Nicole said Chris is tasked with doing lockout tagouts and there would be a record of some type of paperwork for this type of activity. Nicole questioned Chris about going to the job site on Monday, August the 12th. Monday is not August the 12th. Monday was August the 13th. That's a typo, I'm sure. Yeah, obviously it is. Unless, no, no, no. No, it's not. Nicole questioned Chris about going to the job site on Monday. She questioned him on August the 12th. That was during their two-hour phone call, I'm sure. In the morning and told him to prove he had been to the site. (laughs) Prove to me you're there. Why would it be that important to her on August the 12th? Why would it be that important to her to ask him to prove to her that he went there or he was going there Monday morning. So that's what this says. On August the 12th, she told him to prove to her that he had been to the site. Unless that's a typo and that means August the 13th. Either way, doesn't ma- it doesn't matter. Why would she want proof that he was at a site? It doesn't even make sense. Chris responded with text messages between him and other Anadarko employees to prove he was at the site. Chris also sent Nicole a picture of a release. Nicole said Chris told her that Luke Apple, his supervisor, had requested 
him or Troy to respond to the release. Chris told Troy he would take care of the release according to Nicole. Nicole said she ended the phone conversation with Chris and he later FaceTimed her that evening on August 12th. She said on the video call Chris. She said on the video call Chris was wearing a black wife t-shirt and he was laying on a mattress with no sheets on it. Nicole said the mattress Chris was laying on could have been blue in color. I asked Nicole about the social media use and she said she had not used social media since approximately 2018. Well, it is 2018, so that's not really saying much. Nicole said she last used LinkedIn, however rarely. Nicole said she discussed with Chris shutting down his Facebook profile. Chris mentioned to her on Saturday, August the 11th, during their dinner, that he had shut down his Facebook account. Chris said he did not use the account. Nicole asked if he had shut the account down all the way by sending a request to Facebook, and Chris did not know about that requirement. Nicole believed his account was only deactivated on August the 11th. Now, it was deleted, and I think Chris didn't know how to delete it, and I think she probably helped him on his phone or something because she explained in detail in the audio how she told him that he had to delete it to actually get rid of it entirely or not just deactivate it. So obviously, Chris didn't know. He just deleted it, you know, and or he thought he deleted it, but he didn't. I wonder why it was so important to her. I mean, really, like if somebody told you they you deleted your Facebook, their Facebook, and it was really no concern to you either way, would you be like, oh God, are you sure you deleted it? You're going to have to go in here and take these steps and email them and, and do all these things or it's not going to be completely gone. It's still going to be there for everybody to see everything on it even in your messenger. So you're going to have to completely delete it. And you're going to have to do these steps or everything there and everything in your messenger and all the likes and everything you've ever did, they're still going to be able to see. You're not going to do that. You're going to be like, oh, really? Why? I mean, that's about it. Or I would. I mean, I'm not going to get in detail and freaking out being like, oh, God, here, let me draw you a map on how you got to exactly do it. Nicole and I discussed her willingness to provide me with her Apple iPhone 6 so further attempts could be made to recover her deleted text messages. Nicole said she would provide the phone and would consent to a search of the phone. Nicole further stated she had recovered from Verizon her call logs from July to August the 13th. Nicole was going to provide those documents to me at our next meeting. Nothing further. Investigation continues. Yeah, but she didn't let you know that she had already Googled how long can cops trace text messages and um, how long uh, does the body of the emails and the text stay after being deleted. Um, she didn't, she didn't, she failed to mention all that part. Um, so she already knew what she was going to be able to get, you know, of course. Um, and for some reason, the SIM card got destroyed. Now, I don't know. I've had a lot of phones. I've been, I've been having cell phones for 20 years now, maybe. Maybe got something like that. Maybe longer. I've never personally ever had a self, a SIM card break. Wow. Just her luck, huh? Nothing like that's ever happened to me or anybody I know. They're pretty... St steady they're pretty hard you know so you know having one to break and and just tear up on you at such an important time wow what some luck some people have geez okay moving right along it's gonna show some attachments and moving on down a supplemental report from 822 pickup of a phone download from the Thornton Police Department Kevin Kobach, a subject one is Doug Parker. He's an officer. The property, 
is phone extraction data and they're getting it for a felony, an evidence felony, a CD and a DVD disc, phone extraction data, and it was put into the evidence locker, investigative supplemental report, report date 822, collected date and time 822, 10.53 a.m., and that is when they collected it. Synopsis, X-ray phone extraction and associated PDF document disk picked up from the Thornton Police Department. Action taken. On August the 22nd, 2018, ICBI agent Kevin Kobach met, with the, met the Thornton Police Detective Doug Parker at the Thornton Police Department to pick up downloaded information from Nicole Kessinger's cellular iPhone 6. Detective Doug Parker provided the attached documents that shows the contents of the phone, both active and deleted material. Detective Parker also attempted to search the download x-ray file for any material dated from August the 11th to August the 16th. That material was downloaded to a PDF document and was later booked into evidence at CBI Lakewood along with the complete x-ray file download that was completed by Detective Parker. No other analysis was completed on the phone data. Nothing further. Attachments. Evidence sheet. Okay, we're going to stop right here with part 15. Uh, when we go into part 16, we will be going into an investigative supplement of A22, and the description will be a follow-up on Shanann's missed appointment. I hope you guys got something out of this. I hope you learned something that you didn't already know. And if not, I hope you got a good refresher on it. It was a good refresher course for you. Until next time, with part 16, this is Unjustified. Oh yeah, and give us a thumbs up if you learned anything or if you, you know, just learned something you didn't already know or or even a refresher. Just, we'd really appreciate a thumbs up. It really does help the channel and the analytics and to get us out there even more. So, we appreciate a thumbs up and even a thumbs down if that's the way you feel. If you don't feel like it was what you was looking for, then give us a thumbs down. Either way, we appreciate your support so much. This is Unjustified.